even with our young people now, we want different results, but we don't want to change how we the approach we have come in, I guess, the approach as it relates to dealing with them. You got to change that too to get some different yeah. results. Cause these kids just different. Mm -hmm. They different. You imagine a school where you really could tap into what you wanted to, like you said in that space. You really love what you were doing. So now I got a purpose for getting up going every morning. Yeah. I heard investment make the four up list. Amazon, the rock nation made investments itself. Go buy the building, don't be worried about it, door split. Even if the mission get hard, you can't afford it. You see me getting money, well, I'm just expressing myself. It's harder building on your own, you always welcome to help. Build a mastermind who works in the pony and heal. You know All right, guys, we back in again for another episode of Change Agents. My name is Caleb. Problematic trash. All right, and today we have the amazing Nick Clark, man. How you doing, bro? I'm good, bro. I'm good. good Appreciate y'all for having good, me, good. man. I know it's long overdue, so I do apologize. <laughs> but I'm here now. You're such an honorable person that I can't even be prop problematic today. Bro, do it, bro. Do it. <laughs> do it, man. <laughs> hey, man, beat every aspect of you. What is it, uh... When you had the shorts on, what's your nickname? Thighs out trail. Thighs out trail. Be everybody like, all in one, man. Bro. Just be everybody, bro. <laughs> I'm still getting back to DMs. I hit y'all later. <laughs> hit later. But man, yeah, man. We have been trying to get this done. Thanks. Because what I realized is the people who really do the work most of the time avoid the attention. Mm -hmm. And you are one of those people. Because I don't even think, I know you busy. But I don't think the reason it's been so hard to get this done has been just because you busy. I really think you've been avoiding it, bro, because you don't like talking about you. I ain't gonna say I was avoiding it, man. Honestly, I've been busy, man. I think, um, <laughs> I think but that's I, how women feel when I be saying I'm too busy to text back. Bro, that's, that's a different, that's a, different <laughs> that's, 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 that's a whole episode within oh, itself. Man. But I haven't really been busy, but I have been too. But then, like you said, I don't really like, I kind of stay, I guess, in the limelight, but out of it too. People who do the work, they just do the work. Like, they ain't really looking to just talk about what they doing. You know what I'm saying? Work is solid. Yeah. So. And I think when you're doing it, because you see so pe so many people that's not doing the work that go so hard for the attention, it kind of gives you a disdain for the attention. Yeah. And see, for me, bro, I'm a, um, I always describe myself as a people's introvert. Like, I love the people, but then I just like being by myself. I like being behind the scenes. I like just the production of everything. You know what I'm saying? So I love the people. Like, I can turn it on and work the room with anybody, but I like chilling by myself. So before we get too deep into it, Nick is the program director mm -hmm. for the parks and recreation side, the parks, the recreation side, right? Yes. yes. More specifically the teams. Yeah. Right? For Fulton County. For the city of Atlanta. Yeah. I, I guess that's Fulton County too, yeah. but well, I think- Well, well Fulton, we too different. See? Let me, let me, let me <laughs> so you got four, political lines. So you got Fulton County government. You got the city of Atlanta. Yeah. So city of Atlanta is in Fulton County, but I'm with the city of Atlanta side. Got it. Got it. So what does that look like? Like, if the whole Atlanta is Fulton County, then how do how do they separate those jurisdictions? I guess. But you got like little pockets and like little silos, so it's like kind of drawn lines to where you know this is city of Atlanta side. This is Fulton County, the whole county. Mm. So you may have like the city of. I'm going to say, who else may be one? Let's use Buckhead, because now Buckhead <laughs> just like kind of diverted, right? Well, if they, if they break off, they could be the city of Buckhead. So they have their own parts and rec, their own fire and rescue, their own whatever. Everything. They have. Yeah. Mm. So it's a little different. But what I love about your, not even necessarily your title, but your position is at the end of the day, dog, most of these niggas is adults. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, the teenagers is where we have to put the focus. Mm -hmm. And I love that, that that's your, your passion, that's also your position. Cause I've seen, you know, you throughout the years, mm -hmm. that's really your focus and that's really my focus and that's really a lot of our focus. Like me and Caleb have, have honestly gotten to the point, even just at the studio where we like, bro, let's go get the kids who want it instead of yeah. trying to bring on the 30 year old who's set in their ways. Right. Yeah. But, what is like the biggest misconception about our teens now that people just keep seeing the missing? It's a, it's a few things, bro. Um, the biggest misconception about teens that they don't, I guess that they're just kind of 
they have no drive, they have no passion. I think we have to find a way to tap into that injury. Because even like with you guys, I yes. think you're tapping into that space with them. Yeah. Then I think so many times too, you got older people, bro, who just really that forgot it. Bro, you was young and lost yeah. at one point too. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You had like you just has been this polished person your whole life. Right. So they trying to navigate through that journey. I think we need guidance because the worst thing we can do is just leave a team out here to just figure it out on their own. Cause they probably gonna do a lot of fucked up shit. Just, yeah. just, just, just being honest about it. Right. Mm -hmm. But we need that guidance and that navigation system to help us through this. Yeah. So I think just being patient with them and just kind of work walking through the excuse me, walking through the process with them because it is a journey. Mm. But I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions. And a lot of these kids too. I'm gonna say this. We say they don't want to, but they do. And again, just being patient. I'm gonna reiterate that one. How much of it is? Our kids being lost with us tapping into the kids, how much is it you got to also tap into the parents of those kids? Oh, man, that's everything. I always say um, to truly help a kid, you got to help their parents. Yeah. Because how do you help me, but you don't help my mom and my dad? They're the heads of this situation. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You can help me, but if they ain't in a good space, it won't matter. Yeah. I got kids every day that are some phenomenal kids, but the home situation is messed up. Yeah. So regardless, again, how much you help me, you ain't helping my mom. Yeah. So that's like and even I like I still got to go back to that. Yeah. So that's why, like, even like me, I think we're at a great space now to where we're tapping into more of your wraparound services. Mm -hmm. So we're looking, okay, how can we get housing? How can we get employment to try to help your parents? Because he's some, bro, and I'm going to be honest, though, even with some of these kids, coming from some of the situations they come from, it's really an act of God they even made it through. Because mm -hmm. sometimes some of these kids' parents, bro, it, they just, they lost. I got mm -hmm. kids, man, as young as eight and nine, armed robbery. Jesus. I mean, really, bro. I'm talking about robbing folks at church and at gunpoint, man. Eight and nine years old. Jesus. No, no remorse, no, no nothing. Just that's no, what they do. No, because mom and dad told you, bro, you got to go get it. I'm not supposed to feed you. Go out here and find a way to get it done. And and one thing, even like with us, like we always battle. Excuse me. Within the space of youth services is navigating through the streets. Because regardless, like even like we just like when we was in a pandemic, the streets didn't stop. You know what I'm saying? Hell, when when the recreation centers closed or any youth service providers are closed, the streets still open. The street right. and, and one and thing about up. the street is they gonna take trav however you are. I yeah. don't care how you come to me. I just need bodies, bro. I'm right. recruiting bodies at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you're competing against too. Then the situation where somebody being able to put money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Hell, how you gonna tell me to come to do this program? But they saying. If I run this package down the street to do this, that, and the third, he I go fifty dollars. He go hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I ain't ate nothing. Mm -hmm. I can't eat hot Cheetos for every damn meal. I want to eat some food. I want to mm -hmm. put some clothes on. Or I got a little brother, a little sister that got to eat too. So yeah. I got to take some too. And I think, you know, I know he's kind of had like his um some backlash recently. But one of the things I really love about LeBron's I Primary School was that the the parents had to go to school too. I think a lot of this is education. You know, it's finances, of course, but even finances is really based off of education. How you, your degree or somebody having a degree might not be the determining factor if they make money or not, but not having an education, a thorough education, don't allow people to think through their emotions. Because mm -hmm. that's what school really is about. School is really to teach you how to think through situations. Man, my old head told me, he said, man, college is really more or less to just kind of, just to show people that you, I hate even use this term, but I'm going to tell you how Jack Light told me. He said, just show people that you were trained. Yeah. You, 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 he's, he's coachable or he's, he or she's trained. That's how he looked at it. Like, hey, man, you can trust this one. He done went to school for four or five years. They good. He got paperwork to show that he's good. He got, he got that, some training. That's how I looked at it. That's how he said it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot like a slave type, but that's how he kind of almost implied it. But me. I don't even, I don't even disagree with that. Because what I, for somebody who like in high school was skipping class and, mm -hmm. bro, I had a 1.9 GPA, but I made a 14.10 on my SAT. The difference is I didn't have, I wasn't invested in the training to be disciplined, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it is. If it's people who go to school for nine years and be doctors and lawyers, that don't necessarily mean they smarter. But they definitely more disciplined in a lot of in a lot of ways. But see, even when you talk about what you just said, that's why I love the space that we are in too. Now we have to tap into more of your interests because you were smart. Mm -hmm. They just I was probably, bored. you probably went you were bored. Mm -hmm. A lot of our smarter kids are bored. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We don't just don't tap into your interests. I just, and I just think school, Shalana, what, what do you want to be? How do we let you work along those lines? Now you have a purpose for going to school. Now you want yeah. to do this. Yeah. As opposed to just going, taking these core classes, you really feel like, I ain't never going to use this. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to use Like when you get to doing some of this math, you're like, bro, I need to know how to multiply, divide, subtract. That's all I need. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm good to go. I need trig. Yeah, what I need trig for? But I also think that's a Southern thing, man. Because, like, you know, my first three years in high school, I did at Westover in Albany. Mm-hmm. Right? In Albany, you got core classes, essentially. You got, if you ain't in Algebra 3, you're in trig. Like, it's, it's one or two options you got. But my senior year, I went to this school, Glenbard East, in like the West Suburbs of Chicago. Bro, if you wanted to learn film writing, that was your literature class. If you wanted to learn theater, that was your that was your PE. Like you had, we had probably fifteen classes per subject yeah. that you could be in. So I wanted to learn screenwriting. Yeah. So instead of me taking British literature or some learning more about Shakespeare that I ain't care about. I was able to learn how to write screenplays. But so see, you get a better it's an interest. You, but you get a better student. Yeah. You get a better student. But see, again, even with our young people now, we want different results, but we don't want to change how we the approach we have coming, I guess, the approach as it relates to dealing with them. You got to change that too to get some different yeah. results. Cause these kids just different. Mm-hmm. They different. You imagine a school where you really could tap into what you wanted to, like you said in that space. You really love what you were doing. So now I got a purpose for getting up going every morning. Yeah. It's the only year I was in school that I didn't get in trouble. Man. Out of, from kindergarten all the way up. And it wasn't like I just woke up a different kid. I just wasn't bored no more. I had stuff that I liked. See, you sound like me. That's why I tell people all the time. I tell kids, like basketball is my savior. Without that, bro, I ain't even sitting here right now. I just, I'm just not. I'm not sitting here. That's why I tell people anytime too, they always tell our kids, sports ain't everything. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Because for me, that may be my reason I get up and do everything I have to do every day. Just so I can Just play. so I can play sport. That may be the reason I make good grades, I come to school. Yeah. The reason why I just don't rob somebody. Yeah. The reason, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, fine, whatever your reason is, that's your everything. Right. So I hate when people say, hey, sports ain't everything or this and that. You don't know my life to say that's not. Because yeah. if a parent says their kids are everything, we don't have a problem with that. Mm, yeah. Same thing with them. You got to find your reason why you want to be the best version of yourself. Love is love. Yeah. So I think it really just comes down to also not kind of training our kids without trauma. Man. Like it's people who don't want their kids to play sports because they didn't make it. And so like they were so heartbroken or the boyfriend was a sports star so he cheated on the the mama. Mm-hmm. Like. It's so many people that we're raising kids with trauma instead of really trying to raise kids with opportunity. Yeah. And I think that's that's why people like you are so important because you know both sides of it, but it's also like you're not going you're not going to let somebody limit a kid. No. We don't realize how much we limit kids, and I think that's one of the best things I love about Caleb because Caleb when we when we have kids in here from even if it's from City of Atlanta or if it's from Morehouse or Caleb find kids who want to be in this space or think they might want to be in this space mm-hmm. and he get them every opportunity in the world to do whatever it yeah. is that they could do. Yeah. And he had a patience for it. He had a like he had he had an initiative for it. Yeah. And you know how sometimes you know we we do I work with you in the summer but you do this every day. Sometimes you don't feel like it. Right. Yeah. And you know. he never seemed to have that energy, like... Oh, no, I don't got the I, same demeanor all the I, time. I feel like we just all been there before, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Been in their shoes, just kind of needing just an outlet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, speaking of outlets, like, what are some of the outlets that you've seen, like, some of these newer kids are looking into and, like, what they kind of need? Um, it's funny, we were joking We were joking about it offline, but yeah. it's real. I think, um, therapy. Yeah. It's a lot of things, it's a lot of layers we got the peel back, man. Yeah. Just even give you a fair shot. But I think they need therapy. I think they need authentic people. Mm. And I think just having real conversations with them and yeah. not sugarcoating certain things. Because I remember I looking at something with like Andre, <clears throat> um, and he was just talking about his mom. I think the greatest thing they just shared real experiences with him. And so many times we sugarcoat stuff for my kids. Sometimes we have to come real yeah. as possible. I think um, exposure. Yeah. Exposure. Yeah. Cause how do I think different if I've never seen different? Yeah. 
I yeah. think through exposure, that's a big thing because you have kids, and I remember even watching ATL the other day, and they said, buddy, they've never been outside of 285. Mm -hmm. You got kids never been outside of 285. You got grown men ain't been outside yeah. of 285. You know so what even saying? like, crazy. when we do stuff like take them to the lake, yeah. you got kids that are just in heaven yeah. cause it's so quiet. Like I've never not heard a siren. I've never not heard gunshots. Like it's so quiet the way it's scary. So I think like those are just a few things, but I, I always look at exposure and I, even like with us, that's one of the pieces I always try to push like exposure. Mm. And I always tell adults like, don't step in that space saying they don't want to do this. Cause a lot of times we don't even know what we want to do until we see it. Yeah. You know, we may mm -hmm. come like when we come to the studio with you guys, they just see, wow, I never thought about doing this. Yeah. I never thought I could own this. But then you see two black men owning, the, owning a production studio in Atlanta and that are willing just possible. to give you some game. Like, right. like with y'all, like, it's one thing I do love about both of you guys. Mm. Y'all willing to give so much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't find a lot of people saying, so like, okay, how much would this cost me? Mm. Well, I don't make no money off this. Yeah, and every way we're going to get paid is not monetary. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Sometimes it's just sowing that seed because even like, originally when I first met you, the first thing you said, I was self-taught. Yeah. You know, so you wanted to teach that to them. And yeah. I would tell our kids, like, bro, this man could be doing so many other things right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's saying, I don't care about no money. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Even Trav. Hey, saying, Nick, what do you need? Okay, they can come to the studio anytime. I got yeah. something for him. Yeah. Him even taking off of the summer to say, hey, I'm not going to do anything in the studio. I'm going to come work with the boys this summer. So he came and was, was I, hate, I hate to use this word employee, but he came and was one of my employees employee. this summer. He, he was. Yeah, he was saying? an employee. Like, I'm going to come work for you guys. I'm yeah. a, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I know I'm missing a ton of money, but what I want to do with these boys at this boys' academy is yeah. more important than that. He right. didn't believe me at first. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't, man. <laughs> Hell no. Hell and, no. But it's true because, like, and it's not just kids. Like, I never thought about being in production until I met Caleb. Mm. Yeah. It wasn't, wow. It's not like I had never, you know, been around music artists, but I saw somebody that was from a small town like me. He's younger than me. But just me and Caleb, I was like, dog, the first thing I did when I decided I wanted to try to embark in this world was we went and sat down and had lunch. And I'm just like, bro, I can't, I couldn't tell you the name of nothing in a production space. And I'm just like, oh, bro, we're gonna open a production studio. Wow. <laughs> like literally. Wow. Like that's how the conversation. I was. had zero. All I, the only experience I had in production was the end result. I've been watching videos and movies and, and scripts for my whole life, but I ain't know what it, I ain't, I still can't name half of the stuff in here. You know, it's right. it's a. But every week, Caleb is exposing me to new cameras, new new ways of doing things, new shooters, so, new exposes everything, new yeah. You know, yeah. just 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 seeing it. Yeah. And then. Coming from Albany, which is so crazy because we got our contract here. Um, Wayne, he from Albany, right? And yesterday he was like, hey, bro, um, I know you be going to a lot of games. You get, like, Hawks tickets. Or can you get me some Hawks tickets and just let me know how much they are? And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. He was like, yeah, man, because, like, I've never been to a pro game of anything. And I'm like, it's and I'm looking at it like, one, you, you, he still live in Albany. But I'm like, bro, I know what I've paid you. So it's not like you didn't have the money to go to a basketball game at some point. But it's like just him seeing us go to basketball and football games, and now that's his exposure. And Wayne, what, I think Wayne 28? But in his whole life, he's been living two hours from the Hawks, the Falcons, all of these his whole life. And Will had Falcon, I mean, Hawks games in Albany. They used to have Hawks games that he's never been to a professional sports game. Wow. And he loved basketball. Wow. So it's just exposure. And I think we underestimate it so much because we get used to it. Yeah. So last yeah. night we yeah. having an event, and I'm telling Caleb, like, I can't believe they doing whatever they was doing. Yeah. And Caleb was like, bro, we just used to it. But there's some people in here that this the first time they got to be yeah. this close to it or they only get to be this close to it once a year. I think somebody was taking photos in front of a car. Yeah, something it was like something that. simple. You know what I'm saying? Like, something simple like that. Yeah. But it's it's true, and I think we take it for granted with our kids. Yeah. And I know, I always say this, like, my dad, my dad is my, my dog. Like, my dad is the man I want to be. But my dad also, I also have a stepdad. And I talk about my stepdad so much because my stepdad gave me a new level of exposure. Like, my, my dad is small town. My dad never lived long, further than an hour away from Albany. Never in his life. My dad is a hard-working, blue-collar, factory worker, worked for Cooper Tires. Mm. Cool. My, dad taught, my dad taught me how to work. My dad taught me 
integrity. My dad taught me how to take care of your family. My dad taught me everything that he can teach me. But it wasn't until my stepdad, mm -hmm. my mom got remarried, and my stepdad was this executive and on planes every week and, you know, on his laptop and taking conference calls while we had dinner and all these different things. And this when I'm in high school. And I'm just like, yo, how much you make? And he was like, I make enough. I make enough to pay for everything 10 times. And he was like, so if you want to make enough to pay for everything 10 times, you don't have to go out there and do it. You can find a way to do it this way. And that just literally changed my life. And then I'm like, okay, and you played college ball? Okay, so now we got some connectivity. You played for Notre Dame. Okay, now and you get to travel the world and see all this stuff. And every time you see me, you give me $100. So you got to be making some money. So it just changed my interest from the street. I was like... The the kid, no no offense, nobody, but I was a kid with the do rag and and the guns and and want to be outside yeah. with the thugs all the time, and I was just like, oh, I ain't got to do that no more. Yeah, and it just happened at a certain point in my life. That's why I be so passionate about the teens. That fourteen, really now, because these kids getting exposed to shit oh, hey, way earlier. Hey, like damn, like yeah. ten to fifteen is, is the critical yeah. critical range at this point for yes. every person. Yes, yes. so. I just be so passionate about that because I know, <clears throat> you know, it was certain people who didn't have a stepdad come in mm. and influence them, and some of them locked up, some of them dead. Or anybody step you know. in and, and, and give them that guidance, you know? So it's important. What's the hardest part about your job? It's a few parts. Um, honestly, man, the hardest part is that you can't always fix a situation you get so attached mm. to a kid and sometimes you just really wish that you could help but you your resources are very limited so that's sometimes the hardest part because yeah. sometimes you really take it you really take it on you know what i'm saying like you really sometimes man you truly get into that space with those kids you're like okay if i could just do this for them that could yeah. change the situation right i think that but then also when you're looking at kids either death um because we just set a space now where I probably lose about three to four kids a year on the low end. That's the minimum. Um, like, I, like I recently yeah, lost. This summer was tough. Like, I, like this summer was really tough. And like um, I lost one of my kids, Briasia. She was um, just a good kid, just kind of hanging out with her friends. One of my kids who were overly involved in the program, but just lost her. So sometimes it, it, that part never gets easy mm -hmm. because I think death and so and so on. I think um, the jail side. I got kids who are in prison. I got a 14 year old. Um, he was 14 at the time. He's probably about 16 or 17 now. Get ready to probably do life in prison for murder. I mean, so, and I think that's probably the hardest part because you talk so much to the kids about certain things, but you look up and you're like, they don't get it. And by the time you get it, it's too late. Too late. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then, like, as a black man, you tell them game from a black man's side because, just being honest, our game is different. Yeah. It's different rules. Like, you got to learn how to play within whatever rules you're in. This game here is different for a black man. You mm -hmm. don't get all these chances. Yeah. Yeah, they keep letting you get the slap on the wrist till we can try you as an adult. Yeah. So we gonna, yeah, you did that crime in 14. That ain't no chance. But, but we gonna keep holding That's a red you to shirt. You, yeah, but we gonna keep holding you till you about 17. Okay, now we can try Trav as an adult. Let's go to court now. Yeah. So they don't look at that, man. That too, I think, so that, those are just some of the hardest areas, just wanting to help um, jail and death, bro. How hard is it to convince the powers that be to make decisions that you see need to be made for the kids, but it don't necessarily, they don't know, normally see it at the top of the ladder. And you being a black man trying to convince. It's, it's, um, it hasn't, it's hard because you're still talking about like um, government or so municipalities, just working with any organization. I mean, they have rules they have to go by. Mm. I think the hardest part is sometimes you just don't, you're not able to adapt as quick as you yeah. need to. Because sometimes with teens, what was good this week, it ain't in next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to change, like, Nick, we can't change that fact. We got to. If we want to stay in this race, we got to change. So sometimes it is very hard because, again, they don't get it. But I think through the space and through what I've done, it's like um, they just trust me. They trust me because, honestly, bro, I just feel like I'm that kid. I know what recreation did. I know what male figures did. I know what community did for me. Yeah. So that's how I see it, too, and that's how I try to model this <clears> thing. Like, okay, we got to do it this way. So you've been working with kids, bro, like 20-something odd years. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. what initially got you? He don't you look 43, dude. He don't look 43. 
He don't now look, look my age, man. <laughs> my butt look 30. But no, you yeah, being modest to, on camera. Try to take care but, of but, but now, like, so so what got you into just helping kids? Man, um, it's crazy, bro. I've been working. It's like um, it's true. Next year will be 30 years. Yeah. Next year will be officially 30 years that I've been doing this, bro. Wow. 30 years. So um, I kind of got into it because I was that kid. Mm. I just knew what it felt like to be that kid. And I knew what recreation did for me. And I know being raised in a home with a single mother, mm. father was there, but kind of wasn't like what I needed my dad to be. Yeah. I just kind of latched onto my coaches. And I knew the impact that these, you know, these gentlemen had in my life. Yeah. I always tell people like, I, I put, I looked at it as an adult, I can say it now. I put uncommunicated expectations on them mm. without them even knowing, bro. Like, I, they were my everything, and it's yeah, like yeah, I yeah. never told you you were. I just expected <laughs> you to be my yeah, everything. Yeah. So with me, I knew what it did for me, yeah. and I felt like I was the person, especially that a young black kid need to see. You need to see a dude where mm. it's like, okay, Holmes ain't really no corny dude. Yeah, he, yeah. Get, he get it from every side, because I have I done been on every side yeah, of it, so yeah. I understand that. You know, everything they done been through, I done been through it. Some things worse, some things a little bit easier, but I understand. Yeah. You know, and I feel like me, I ain't here to judge. So that's right. why I got in that space. And again, the impact, man, and the power yeah. of people to inspire. Yeah. Now, you brought up your dad. And, mm. you know, uh, first and foremost, you have a podcast dedicated to fathers mm. and the experience of fathers. Mm. Talk about that. What, what made you start that? And what's the overall goal for the firm podcast? Man, I started firm because um Tell them what it means. Fathers inspired, restored, and motivated. So again, fathers, um, restored, just kind of rebuild us up, man, and get us back where mm. we need to be. Um, inspired, restored, um, excuse me, inspired. Let me go to inspire first. I'm sorry. Fathers, inspired. So just to inspire us to be better. Because mm. our, our communities need us. I, no, not no no knock on women, excuse me, but men kind of run communities and and families. We do. And we got to step back into that space. And when we so, don't, it go bad. Yeah, it goes bad. When you think, when you have a problem, they call a man to come in and fix it. They call mm -hmm. a man to come in not, not being sexy. They're just being honest. Mm -hmm. um, to restore us, just kind of get us back to that space because I think we have been broken somewhere through this process. So restoring us back to the level of greatness that we were in yeah. before. Yeah. But then, too, motivating you through some of these conversations and so on. So Firm came about because of um, what I went through as a dad, man. I went through hell and back, man. I went Same. through hell and back, man, Same. as a father, man. But I thought I want no smoke. I, we, I, we, I we cool no, now. I'm gonna say this. I went through hell and back, but they're going what you said. We're good. Yeah. But I felt like I wanted to create something to where men could look at this and say, okay, dang, okay, he gonna help me navigate through this. Yeah. Whether it be the legal system, because everything a dad has went through, I went through. I went through going in and out of court, battling through that space, to now being in a good space with both my children's mother, to also being a custodial parent. So I've cussed them my my youngest daughter. Unicorn club. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the black unicorn game, man. <laughs> but it just came out of that space. Cause okay, I felt like okay. God kind of gives you like a, um, a testimony. Right. And I wanted to share it. Yeah. I wanted to be as transparent as I could so you could relate. Mm. But I wanted to make sure we put the information out there. Because a lot of times with us, you know, we were all raised, especially Southern, Southerners, you don't tell your business. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. we don't tell our business. So now you if I'm dealing with something, you know? yeah, if I'm dealing with something <laughs> as a black man, I keep it in. Keep but if I in. say, okay. What were, you, what were you going through when you couldn't see your kids? Yeah. Talking through that emotion, so dad said, oh man, I'm not the only one going through this. Cause sometimes we feel like we're the only ones. Yeah. So that's kind of where it came from. Yeah. Um, the goal is more just to, again, to inspire your fathers and to be a, a vessel for support, be a vessel of motivation. Um, we get, I get a lot of women always saying too, they love the podcast cause they never thought about mm. things from a male's perspective. Because sometimes we don't put ourselves in the male's shoes. You don't see why, maybe he not showing up to be a dad because he's never had a dad. So like sometimes it's being able to look a little deeper, but even with men, um, just encouraging us, man, just overly encouraging us. Yeah. How encouraging. much of that is our responsibility to kind of make people see our side, like make people see our our pain, our vulnerabilities, our mistakes, our remorse. Like how how much of that is on us as fathers, as men, versus how much is on it as women in the rest of the world to kind of take a step back to try to notice us? Ooh, that's a load of them, boy. Ooh. I think it's a huge responsibility on us. I think um, sometimes as men, I always look at this, you're not a grown man till you're able to be vulnerable. Right. 
if you can't tap into your vulnerability, you can't say you're a man. You cannot say you're a man. Right. Because right. if I'm a man, bro, if I want to sit up here and cry with y'all two brothers right here, yeah. I can do that. I cry yeah. a couple and, episodes. And, and, I, and I'm yeah, but I'm but it, but that doesn't make me any less of a man. Mm -hmm. You know, I think common says when I'm being weak is really when I'm being, being strong. strong. Right. right. So that's right. kind of how I right. look at it. Like when I'm vulnerable, I can be that. And I think sometimes as black men, we don't communicate. We just expect for you just to know. Yeah. And then I think with for a black woman. She plays a vital role in that because you have to create the environment for him to communicate. Mm -hmm. Because the worst thing we can we do need as a safe black man, too. if I don't have a safe space, or if I think this space is safe, and I come out and say something wrong, and this thing I know you saying, oh, that's why your daddy left you when you were young. Like, whoa, I'm done. I'm done. We done. I'm never this. talking we done. again. We never talking again. Mm -hmm. Then you wondering like, he don't, he don't talk. No, he don't talk because when he tried. And, that, and don't get me wrong, that's not right that we hold our emotions onto one thing. Like yeah. that one thing can break us. But that's just how we're wired. You have to give us that space and that one thing for us to vent, get it out, right. and just listen to it. Right. So I think black men hold a major, I say, <clears throat> I say black men probably hold about 60%. I say black women may hold about 40%. Because I don't expect for nobody else to take care of us but us. That's fact. They, they ain't just, that's just yeah. being honest. I think we have to... Even though we had an expectation to take care of other people, I don't expect nobody to take care of me but me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my last question. Cause you know, I gotta get into it a little bit. You 43, you're in shape, you, you got a great job. <laughs> <laughs> but hey man, we ain't even talking about that. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> no, hold on. Hey, we not even going hold, there, no, man. hold on. You we take, not even going there, man. You, you you take care of so many kids, you take care of so many people. What does Nick need? You thought I was gonna go somewhere else. Um, honestly, man, he thought I was with, with Nick, um, sometimes Nick just need to learn to take breaks. Mm. Yeah. Nick need to learn to take breaks, man. I, I'm speaking third person, but Nick's, Nick needs to learn how to take breaks. And sometimes I have to understand, like, again, just take you some time for you. Because sometimes I'm so engulfed for doing things for other people, I really forget about myself. Because mm. I feel like... I'm put here to be a servant, bro. Like I'm put here to bless people and take care of people and put them in situations for them to be good. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I have to learn to just take a step back from me sometimes. And I think uh, what else? Wow. I'm gonna say that's it, bro. I'm gonna yeah. say that's it. So one thing I just wanted, uh, just for me personally, because like you know, I would come on the pod, but I'm not dead, so you I don't really fit no, the criteria. No, it ain't. Let me say, let me, let me say this. You know what I'm Dad on the way so, in no. about three years. <laughs> no, you need to come, cause everything yeah. ain't dad related too. Cause I don't think every, I don't want everybody to think we discuss dad stuff. Something it yeah. just. But see again, we still I'm still a father, so it's just that. But yeah. bro, please come. Yeah, 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 I would love to come on, but I was just gonna ask y'all this, man. Like, you know, for the men that aren't dads, mm -hmm. right? Like, what are some things that we can do? to help like strengthen our youth as like black men and black women? I think mm, men who, I think men who are not dads, you're, you're valuable as well. I think we need to just black men. I think black girls need to see a black man. They need to see what is, they need to interact with a black man, know how to treat a black man and so on and so yeah. forth. So I think we need them to see a black man. You see how a black man takes yeah. care of a, of a black woman. Yeah, because even, I, was, I was throwing the alley for like mentorship. Yeah, yeah. no, no, <laughs> but, but, but we, like we just, need it. Just we talking about it. like mentorship, you know, especially for me, like, and what Travis was talking about earlier, like, you know, I worked with like, you know, three or four different kids from my house, you know what I'm saying? And just mentored them this whole summer. Yeah. And, you know, they started school this year and this one of them, you know, shout out Colin. This, shout is, out part, Colin. this, this is senior year wow. um, at Morehouse. Well, he spent this whole summer like working sure. with us, bro, and never really been on set. And I gave him like just a level of exposure of like, you know, just seeing how we work, how productions kind of run. And he hit me up on my birthday, which was this weekend. He was like, look, Caleb, like, you know, I appreciate you just showing me like what production should be. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause you see it on the internet, you might see it on social media, you might see the different houses, but like seeing the way that we ran things, mm -hmm. it, it set a new standard for how he should do his things. You, you gotta know what get saying? close to the fire. Right. So, you know, for other men, women, whatever, that's kind of watching this, like what advice would you kind of give them that's not exactly parents, you know what I'm saying? Just from a, from a mentorship standpoint. No, nah, you need that mentorship. Yeah. Like you need that space, bro. So I commend you for even doing that. Yeah. Um, I tell people like mentorship is powerful. Right. Cause I think mentorship is powerful for a bunch of reasons. Cause I've had my own, I'm gonna say mentoring issues. Yeah. Or mentoring trauma. Yeah. Because I think just being honest, especially when you get older in life, 
for a black man to humble himself and go to another brother and say, yeah. I see something in you, can you mentor me? Yeah. That's a powerful role to step into. That's a level of vulnerability too. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A high level. Yeah. And I think for it's me, one of I, the hardest levels. But, but yeah. I, that, that's what I was gonna say. For me, that was one of the hardest levels because I've done it, and then I think brothers kind of looked at it like, man, yeah, he came to me to mentor. Yeah, look, look, he came to me, and it's like to me, yeah. that was almost like. Oh, I ain't asking it, nobody. I, yeah, yeah, it was almost that way. I finna say some sucker shit. That's, yeah. what I was gonna say. That's what I was gonna say because yeah. it's like. If you can't do it for people, if you can't mentor them, don't even do it. Don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. Just say, do I it. can't do it right now. Or just right. say, I can men I can mentor you, but at a limited capacity. Yeah. Because one of the hardest things to do is you make yourself vulnerable. And then that person, they say they can do it, but then they can't they do, don't it. do it. You yeah. know, because again, that And now it's man, worse than when you, it's worse than right, before work, you even had. Worse. Right. Worse. Right. worse. The worst thing ever. Right. So right. we need, like, mentors. Mm -hmm. Hell, I need a mentor. Y'all need mentors. You know, we all have I, mentors. I still got mentors to this day. You know what I'm saying? To this day. And I tell people, even with mentoring, I've got some mentors that are younger than me. Yeah, yeah. They're younger than me. You know, because sometimes I just need something maybe that yeah. he got going on. I need I need a little yeah. bit of that. Like, I need that level of yeah. confidence. Yeah, so. teach me how to use TikTok. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Please, <laughs> Will. Man, we be, when, no. Will, when Will comes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Man. Be like, hey, dog, how you got the 12 million? Right, Boy, right, y'all right. wasn't on use TikTok? Bro, like, I can't believe I mean, that, bro. I mean, I know how to use it, but not like them. The <laughs> you I don't know man? the strategy behind it. I know how to post them, but it's just because I think we just aged out of new socials. Man, I'm, yeah. I'm aged out of everything. You know bro. what I'm saying? I'm, it's just I'm, like, I'm, I'm getting to the old age where it's like, with cell phones, I don't even want a new cell phone. It's like, can it send a text message? Right, can I get a right, call? Right, 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 right. All them features right. with, the, with the tech, with the picture, with the camera, I'm good, bro. Oh. I don't need none of that. One thing um, King said, King Randall, um, is Shout every every man should be responsible for a kid that's not theirs. Right, I agree. Um, I agree. and I I wholeheartedly agree with that. But I also just I think when you you know step parents get like a stigma. Mm -hmm. I think just seeing and you know I've been on both sides of that. I had a stepmom who didn't really rock with us, like didn't really rock with kid the kids mm -hmm. that wasn't her kids, and then I had mm -hmm. the stepdad who. Him and my mom ain't been together in 20 years, and I still talk to him every week. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think just seeing that, you realize the effect you just have when you put yourself into a kid's life or a young, young adult's life, or even like, you know, I've, it's been times, it's funny because Reggie here working with us, right? Mm. But it's been times where Reggie was like, yo, bro, I really need you to help me kind of through this, this stage of my life. And I don't know money stuff, and I don't know crazy stuff, just like, I need some kind of guidance right now. And this is before he even moved it. And I've know, I've done that too. Like I've went to certain people and say, hey, I'm embarking on this new business. I don't necessarily know this, this world. I need you to teach me. So I think it's really about just always staying a student. And I think as black men, if we put ourselves in positions to be mentored, we teach kids that they should always be open to guidance and in direction. So I think that's one of the most important things you can do if you're not at, if you're not a parent quote, per se. But I think when you look at the mentoring space, like we have to be open to that. Like me, me requesting a mentor, asking for mentorship does not make me any less then. So your ego has to be removed out of the way too. And that's even like what we deal with like the boys and the yeah. teens. It's like teaching them how, but it don't make you not a man to ask for help. Ask for help through this yeah. journey because the worst thing to do is like, why would I want to go through certain things that he or you have already been through? Yeah. I could just say, hey, what was, what was your pitfalls and how did you get through this? Yeah. So when I get to that same point, okay, I'm going to take this route because he said he went this route and this happened. We need that mentorship because, again, in every aspect of everything we do. That's why even like with the podcast, that's what it was about. It's yeah. like a level of mentorship because I'm not saying I'm the perfect dad because, hell, yeah, no, yeah. I, got, I got ups and downs. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to be in this fight. You know, I think that's why I tell anybody, even well, first thing through fatherhood, like, it's like consistently saying you're going to show up every day. Like, I don't know what the hell going to happen, but one thing you can count on is I'm going to be here every day. Yeah. You recently made your page public. Tell the people where they can find you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Got we, we laugh, man, because through this journey, man, I think, um, and it's crazy you started off with that. He just talked about me being very private. So I never wanted to have a public page. I'm not the social guy. 
I'm not this social guy. I'm very, like I said, a people's introvert. I made my page public because of Travis. <laughs> he, he's, bugged me, he's bugged me so many times. Hey, bro, I can't share this video. Hey, you can't do this. You need to put this out here. So he's been like, honestly, my coach through a lot of this stuff here, man. So yeah. I'm trying this public page thing. I don't, yeah. It ain't yeah. been too much on that too wild, but I can be found on Instagram at um, King underscore two. So I can, I'm on Instagram now. You can find the Firm Podcast page. Okay. But um, I'm going to stay public. My, I'm gonna stay my, public. my thing is, man, it's enough negative <laughs> out here. We got to shine a light on positive and positive people. Amen. Positive people and positive things, positive <laughs> ideas can't stay behind the, the private wall. And I know why we, you do it or how why people do it. Because it's, it's, it's been times where I was like, man, I don't want to be in the public. I just want to do the work. And I'm a little crazy, so I don't want to say nothing that's going to mess up what some other stuff that could be happening. Yeah. But, man, we, we talked about men, mentorship and exposure. People have to see, kids have to see people like you. Adults have to see people like you. Men, women have to see people like you. So yeah. I really want it. One, to give you your flowers, but I also want you to stay at, as open as you're willing to be because people need to see that, and that's what this whole show is about. Yeah, he, if you go on my social <laughs> media page, hey, hey, I'm, he's probably right, man. Ain't going to be nothing on there but sneakers music, <laughs> and, like, dad stuff, man. That's all. That, that's it. That's it. Nah, we get it. That, that's um, my stuff of choice. One last, one last question for me, too. Um, so for kids that are watching this, like, where can they, you know, learn more about Parks and Rates and, like, register, sign up, and stuff like that? So you can always visit the City of Atlanta's website. We have a Parks and Recreation page. You can go on there and visit okay. um, the website, and yeah. also you'll find any of the 14 locations that we have programming at. Um, but if you need anything, you can always email me at uh, nrclark at atlantaga.gov, and I'll definitely connect them with the right resources. Because okay. I like to be hands-on with people. I think um, I'm big on just touching people, just especially mm -hmm. with parents, just to make them feel comfortable in that space because they're giving you their child. Right. That's right. why a lot of times right. I'm able to handle your child like I handle them because of the yeah. comfort level I've provided you. Yeah. So you can, you can find do we, do we tell the story about how we found Nick or do we just sign up? That, that's that going to be another. Yeah, we'll do that later. That'll be another hour. We'll do that later. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to some real people that sent us to Nick. But... When he said I, the email, it made me think about it. I'm I'm not in that, man. I'm not in that, man. Shout out Judge Gundy. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Kasim Reed. We just gonna leave it at that. You know real, what I'm saying? We real got, we real got people doing real things, yeah, man. So to be a change agent, you gotta be two things. You gotta be inspired, you gotta be aware. Go change something. I'm Kevin. Unproblematic trail. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Out. We out. <laughs>